Hello, gang. It's Sunday the 5th of July 2015. A warm welcome along to an extra late night United uh, Kingdom talk uh, this week, boys and girls. Now, if you're watching on Periscope, just to let you know, I cannot see your messages. I have the message thing turned off here, although I'm hoping you'll be able to talk to each other, OK? Uh, Dino uh, is already with us today. As told me the Periscope keeps going on and off. I think it's probably you and not me, Dino. Uh, often we get one person say that. And uh, it's all right for everyone else. But uh, thanks for letting us know anyway. OK, so just to let you know, if you're watching on Periscope, you can't I can't see any messages. So you can you can say what you want about me if you want, because I can't see it. So really, you'd be wasting your breath if it's nasty, wouldn't you? Although I'd be disappointed if it was nice and uh, I missed it. I'm quite chilled out, I must say. That doesn't mean you can't join in. I'll tell you how to, how to do that uh, in a minute, OK? I'm feeling quite chilled out tonight, I must admit. Um, I've just had a vegetarian chilli, which I did earlier. And I was a little bit concerned it wouldn't be as good as it usually is. Because generally, I'll do that. I, I, I've got a slow... You know one of those big slow cooker things? I've got one of those downstairs. And generally, I'll, I'll make it just before I go to bed whatever time that might happen to be but it'll probably be early tonight but sometimes that's two or three o'clock in the morning and i'll chuck all the stuff in switch it on and it's ready for the next lunchtime okay um uh and that's how it, that's how it works so i put it all in and it tends to be on for blimey i mean anything between 10 and 12 hours really which is quite long it is <laughs> it's quite a long time for it to be on but it tastes all right at the other end. So today, I decided, just after I uh, come back from church this morning, I thought to myself, I quite fancy a chilli tonight. So I went to Waitrose and got all the bits and pieces in. And I put it in, and it went on round about... Pfft, round about one o'clock in the afternoon. One o'clock. And I thought, I wonder if, you know, by tonight, that would be enough time for it to, it to be on. Uh, for it to be ready. So I put it all on at one o'clock. One, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I had it at about eight, about eight o'clock tonight. I think it was about eight, eight, half past eight, something like that. So that's only seven and a half hours. Now with the vegetarian chili con carne, you put all the stuff in except your vegetarian mince, which in my case tonight was corn, minced corn. I do eat quite a lot of corn. Now you can also use minced soya and i think also now what's that other thing uh, lentils i think you can do lentils as well that's in place of having beef you see what i mean if it's vegetarian now you don't put that in well i don't know about the lentils but certainly with the soya and the corn you don't put either of those in until the last half hour 45 minutes all right so i've got all that stuff i've, I've chopped up the the peppers chopped up the um uh, I've got proper chilies. I put three chilies in. Oh, we don't muck about. We're not having any mamby pamby mild blooming chili. It's got to be hot. I'm going <sighs> like that. Although not not jalapeno things. I don't. They're too much. They are Jal jalape jalapenos. Jalapeno. I don't know what they're called. Those those tiny little things. All that. And they sometimes I put them on pizza and you eat one. And <sighs> no, I don't put it. So I put three peppers in. Three little. Um, uh, sorry, three chilies in, as well as the peppers. Three chilies in, chop them up. And when I'm doing those, I, oh, I've got a set of rubber gloves downstairs, throwaway ones. I've got like a like a box of them, and I put those on when I'm ever, ever I'm chopping up, you know, proper chilies, because you don't want those on your hands, dear. You know, one minute you put it on your hands and you go like that. Oh no, your eye will probably fall out in front of you. That's the truth. It will for absolutely fall out in front of you, your eye. Be warned on that one, boys and girls, OK? So I put my gloves in, chopped all those up. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, some some big cartons of um, chopped up tomatoes. And uh, some chilli uh, uh, kidney beans. All in the pot. Turned it on about one o'clock. I put it on the high for, for about about three hours and then I turned it back to medium and went to bed when I had a little sleep in the afternoon which I always do I've got up again first thing I did when I got up I got out the, the corn you know I had a little taste and I got a few bits of the pepper out just to 
see if it would break up and indeed it was quite soft so i thought well maybe it is actually done oh and and an entire bulb of garlic we do, you're probably noticing if you get a little bit close to your phone or your computer you're probably noticing that the garlic is coming out of your speakers at the moment <sighs> how's that feel <sighs> is that hurting you <laughs> <laughs> so we chop, so the entire bulb of garlic is in there and um i got up about as i say about eight o'clock and i've put the um put the put the minced corn in put that in there then started watering my plants now at the moment it takes me about half hour to water all the plants in the garden now today and i told you before i don't usually do this i did put the sprinkler on the back garden the reason being is I put this powder stuff on to kill all the weeds and there's great areas of the lawn that now looks completely dead. <laughs> you, you try, don't you? It, it just looks completely dead and it, it's looked like that for quite some time now. So I thought, you know, I've got, I've got to try and get that back up. So I just put the sprinkler on for about 25 minutes. That, that's all it needed. And it's pretty cool out there now as well and dark. And you don't want to put the sprinkler on during the daytime. So I did that, then watered all my hanging baskets and out of fun. And then, and then about half hour, then I watched the telly for 15 minutes, had a cup of tea. And by then I went back out to my slow cooker, dished it up. Oh, just delicious. So I've learned something there. You don't actually need to have that cooker on for 12 hours. You know, sort of, what did I say? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven hours. That's, that's all it took, seven hours. So it's, it's actually a lot quicker than I thought it would be. Now that I know that, in future, you know, when I'm doing my nighttime meal, I can, like, put it on at, like, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning and buy seven o'clock at night it, it's ready so i've, I've learned you know i never knew i could do that i always thought for some strange reason that i needed it on for like 10 12 hours or something like that so it was absolutely delicious delicious i had that then i watched humans or uh, channel four program anyone see that tonight humans very good Wendy I was talking to earlier, she doesn't like. She watched about 10 minutes of it, but it is not her thing, which is understandable. It's a bit science fiction. It's about robots that are so identical to humans, it would be very difficult to tell, except for their eyes. I love the twinkling eyes in the, in the synths. So I watched that tonight, and now I'm up here to talk to you. OK, and as I say, uh, we are still on Periscope. We are also on YouTube as well. The only thing is, if you're watching on Periscope, I can't see your messages. I've turned that off. And the reason I've turned that off is I have found it when I'm doing this long show. I do lots of little shows during the week. But generally, when I do the long show on Saturday, I've been doing it on Periscope now for about three weeks as well at the same time. And I found it really distracting. Wendy, regular correspondent and viewer to the show, who likes to pull me up on occasions, but I don't mind that because when she's pulling me up, it's for some reason. It's not, it's not for some stupid reason. She's always got good reason to do that. It was her who first said, don't you find that distracting? And I don't know. I don't think at first I did because it was all new. But as I've got into it, I found that when you're doing a long chat show, as I am now, to have little messages come up on the screen every five minutes um, is, is, is difficult. So I, I, I don't know, really. I, I, I'm not quite sure why that is. But there we are. That's one of those things. Uh, Terry H has just sent a Skype message in to say I'm not on Periscope. Uh, I am it's it's on it's on i know i've got about five people watching at the moment terry so uh yes indeed that's on there maybe it's maybe it's going on and off a bit tonight i don't know um we'll be opening a, a phone line though later on and you'll be able to call in okay boys and girls oh is someone calling in now let's just, just take a call and see who that is who's calling on line 517 even before the phone lines have been opened well, fine mate i think i've got the wrong number you haven't got a wrong number. I recognise that voice straight away. OK, then. <clears throat> Hello, Chris. Good evening, Dino. Hello, how are you? And how is sunny London tonight? It's cooled off a bit today, hasn't it? Oh, thank God. Don't you up, think? 
I was up all night last night. It kept me up. Why is that? Though? Oh, what, because of the heat? Yeah, thank God, though. It has calmed down a little Haven't bit. you got any air conditioning in there? I have, but um, I'm saving up my money because, you know, I'm moving. So uh, that's another story. I'll tell you what I wanted to tell you. What, what, what have you got? Have you got one of those push around? In my bedroom, I've got one of those things from... I think it was B and Q. It's about must be about ten years old now, and you could push it from room to room, but it sits in there all the time. I did have a hole put in the wall years ago for that. Or oh, I must tell you, Dino, before you tell me what you want to tell me, um, I I tried to make that hole in the wall for the machine. You know, it's the same size as a tumble dry hole, isn't it? You know the sort mm. of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and after I tried to make it, make it, I then had to call a builder in to make the hole smaller because <laughs> there was a massive hole in the side of my house, dear, and it was too big. <laughs> what what uh, what a lot of people um, tend to do is just open their back doors or their windows and just put that pipe out the window. Oh, it's, it's not as good though because what's happening? You might object. you might think you're getting the hot air going out, but if you've got any sort of gap in the window, it's coming back in again. Absolutely. Anyway, what you got to tell us today, Dino? Well, you introduced me to Periscope. Yes. <clears throat> so the other night, you said to me, "I'm I'm uh, not going to be on tonight." Right. And this was about this was two nights ago. It was about uh, half past two in the morning. Right. So I switched on Periscope because it's very interesting when you see who's following who, who's following who. And I found some absolutely amazing names oh, of God. people who were following, you know, stars and, and TV presenters. Oh, yes, and, yes, absolutely. Yeah, oh, they're my all God, it's amazing. Yeah. And um, anyway, so I, I clicked on, um, I think it was Ollie Mann. Oh, uh, LBC, yeah. 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 And anyway, there was one of these followers I saw, and I thought, oh, hey, hey, this guy looks really nice. And he was, anyway, it turns out this guy was broadcasting live. So I clicked on this guy, and as I clicked on, on him, him and his friend were drunk. And I thought, oh, here we go. It's just a, another drunken spree that I'm watching, you know, on, on Periscope. On, and I was about to turn it off. As I was about to turn it off, and they were broadcasting, they kick some guy's front door in. And I thought, what? What? Yeah. So they kicked this this guy's front door in. And uh, they ran towards him and said, where's your money? Where's your money? And I thought, oh, my God. <laughs> what am I seeing here? Anyway, <clears throat> the guy went, over there, over there, over there. So, so they were filming a burglary. So they were started rifling through all of these doors. And they were getting money and jewellery. And then they scarpered out of the house and started smashing his windows. And this is all going out on on his periscope? Yeah. Good so point. I remember you saying to me that if you're broadcasting live, turn off your location. Yes, yeah. So their location was live. So I zoomed in on where they were yeah. and rang the, rang the police. Fantastic. So what and? happened... This was in Crawley. Yeah. So I rang 999. And isn't isn't that where you're... Where are you moving to again? I'm moving out to Caterham. Oh, no, no. OK. Yeah, go on. So what happened was I rang 999, and, of course, it puts you through to the Met Police. If you're in London, it, it, it takes you to your local police force, of course. So they said, no, you have to redial 101. So I dialed 101, and then it says, we're putting you through to... Uh, the Metropolitan Police in London, if you don't want that, press hash. So I pressed hash, and then once you press hash, it tells you, it, it's like a switchboard. If you require this, press one. If you oh, require this, God press two. And I thought, oh, I just need the police. I just need the police. <laughs> anyway, so I got through finally to Sussex Police, and I told them that I was on Periscope, and they were like, you, you're on what? Uh, what? Uh -huh. you, you're, you're watching people at 2.30 in the morning? You, what? What? Yeah. They were like, as, thinking I was a perv. <laughs> anyway, I was trying to explain it. And I said to them uh, how Periscope works. And I said to them, I've got the location of where these guys are. And I'm watching them. They've walked away from this house. And this is their location. So, of course, within 30 seconds, I said, I'm watching them as I'm talking to you. So I've got the phone in one ear and I'm watching them on my, on my iPad and yeah. in the other hand. So they said, well, where are they walking? I said, well, they just walked into this park. So all of a sudden you heard, dee, nee, 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 and they're in the parking, because they're still broadcasting these guys, and they're going, get down, get down, get down. And they're hiding behind these bushes. 
and I've got the police in the, in, the, in the other ear still going, where are they, where are they? I said, well, they're in some bushes in a park. And they said, well, you said you've got the location, so where are they? So I described the park, and there was loads of police cars. You could hear them all, nee, 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 nee. And, um, well, it's not quite how it goes these days. That's very 80s, but still. It, well, it's, it's, a, it's, the the sound that, it's the sound that we remember, Dean. Yeah, of course. The you, you, you likes of me and you, yeah. And um, anyway, um, the police couldn't find them. So this was going on for 20 minutes, having the police in one ear and the iPad in the other watching them. All of a sudden, they decide to start walking. So um, it, it, I, I, one of them's name was Dave. I won't say their names. Their names no, because no. They, they might even come on. One's name was Dave and the other one was Jason. And they both admitted on Periscope doing the burglary. Who, oh, who, that was really... Sorry, who did you say was filming all this? One of them. I mean, how, 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 I'm not, how stupid can you be? Absolutely. So, to cut a long story short, they both admitted doing it. Both admitted, like, to people that were viewing them, oh, we just, we just uh, kicked this door in, robbed this guy. I thought, Jesus Christ. Anyway, they got out of the park, and the police were still in the park looking for them. So I said to the police, well, I can see the, the thing moving. They're moving up the road, and this is the road they're going into. And um, eventually, the police caught them. And what they did is, how they got the confession out of them, they took their mobile, f well, because they rang me back later, the police, and told me this. Yes. The, uh, they got their um, phone off them, played back their periscope, and of course they saved their periscope on their phone. And so the admission of them doing the burglary and the video was still on their phone. <laughs> I mean, how, I, I, how ridiculous was that? How stupid can you be? Yeah, so they both got arrested. So, there's a tale. I, I just don't understand. Is it? Is it like, I, you know, it, do you know what it sounds like to me? Like the old, um, like the old Asbo badge. You were proud, or yeah. not me, I would never be proud to have such a thing, but people were proud when they got one of those Asbo things, weren't they? They were proud. Yeah. So, what they were doing was the same thing. They were proud and wanted to share with the world what they'd just done. Unfortunately, they're now going to be prosecuted for it. Good. Absolutely. And that is one reason. Now, how, I wonder how they found out this person. Maybe they followed his periscopes and followed his locations and knew where he was. Or what, what, might have been another... But we don't know that, do we? We don't know No, that. but it was absolutely mad. So they ran me back later and the, the police and they said, that was an absolute first. We've never had anything like this ever before um, where we've had someone live on the internet um, help us with, with a crime. But the guy apparently was very badly beaten. Um, in... What, the, the, the person that they robbed? Yeah. Oh. But they were, they were so brazen about absolutely everything. I mean, it was unbelievable. But, got them. So, there is a lesson to be learned, not that you do it to commit a crime, is that never turn on your location code. I know in this case it helped. But I remember you saying about turning your location code yeah, off. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and they had theirs on. It, it was it was absolutely. mad. Absolutely. I, I oh, actually someone is someone is just saying on. I'm not that you want to know. Someone is just saying on Periscope. They've seen crimes on Periscope as well. Really? Because I, I've, I'm what, watching Periscope as well. People committing crimes and broadcasting them live. Yeah. Someone else. What is the hell's it. all that about then? I don't know. That person that just said that, you should ring Chris in and tell him what you what you just saw. Oh, that that's that's just an amazing story, isn't it? Because I, you see, as you're going on, I thought. Do you know what I thought? I thought you were going to carry on with the story, and at the end, you were going to say, and the police turned up, and then realised that it was all a show put on for Periscope. Like it had all been concocted before. A little bit like all these programmes on the telly at the moment. But it wasn't. It was an actual real robbery. Oh, have you gone? I think we've lost Dino. Oh, that's a shame. We've lost you, Dino. I can't hear you at all. Oh, no, the call's dropped out. Now, what shall I put? Problems so bad, the call was impossible. Had several problems. Had problems. No, we, 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 we won't bother with that. Oh, yeah, he's calling back now. Did you have to put another two, two pence in the slot, dear? No, I, I, I did those <laughs> things. Remember what we used to do with wire? Put the two pence in and pull it straight back out. <laughs> I beg your pardon, I work for BT, I'm not having any of that going on. Is that no, How did not. you do that then? How did that work? 
how did what work? And let me just explain to people, if there's anyone young <laughs> watching, if there's anyone young watching, you won't, you won't understand what we're talking about. Uh, public phone boxes used to be very large things on the wall, OK? And there were two slots on there. Um, there was a two pence slot and a ten pence slot, OK? And you would pick up the receiver, dial on a... No buttons, no buttons, dear. You would dial a number... Jesus. And then the, the, when the other end answered, they say, hello, this is. And then it would go beep, 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 beep. At which point you'd push one of the coins in, a two pence or a ten pence. I mean, and you would have to push, OK? None of this... None of this puffy just dropping the thing in the uh, in in the slot. Oh no! You had to physically push this thing in. Nine times out of ten, the bloody slots were jammed anyway. That's and right. then the thing would go in, and it would go. And then you could commence your call. Sometimes you'd get cut off straight away. Now I worked on these mechanisms. Um, and they were they they often went wrong. They often went wrong. But you say you can get the two p back. How did you do that then? Well, what you used to do, if you drilled a hole in the two pence piece and put a wire through the through through the um, two pence piece, you could pull it straight back out. You could yank it out. I you know the bar that used to go across it on the end, just underneath it. Yeah. The bar used to just fall back. Well, I didn't know that. Yeah. So you just and I was the a blooming engineer, out. and we didn't even know that. Oh, well, do you mean to say I've been paying for my calls unnecessarily when I was a child? And then, of course, <laughs> I found another way. To, did Let me ask you a question, because my parents did it, because there was four kids at home. There were what? There was four of us at home, kids. Right. And we used to absolutely belt the telephone. And mum and dad were always saying, oh, stop using the phone, stop yeah, using yeah. the phone. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was expensive then. So what my mum and dad did is they put a lock on the phone. On, cause you know, you know yes, back in the day, yeah, you, had, you, a, you, you I know, had the dial. In one of the dials, in one of the holes, you'd put this little thing and it would physically stop the dial from turning. Am I right? No. We oh, found no. another We found another way. What we found out, because a friend of my mum and dad, she was an operator. Yeah, operator, can I help you? Yeah, exactly. So what you'd do, because in those days, of course, you didn't have... 0208, 0207, so yes, you didn't have to yes, physically yes. do it, all of that. It was just dial the number. So what you'd do is when you wanted to dial, let's say, one, two, three, on the pips at the top, you'd literally just touch the pip, just tap the pip once, yeah. give, it, give it two or three seconds, tap the pip twice, boom, boom, two, and then tap it again, boom, boom, three, and then it would dial one, two, three. And that's just how we to, got just explain that again. No, you, you completely lost me then. So yeah, ha the pips what happened? The, the pips on the top yeah. of the phone. Yeah. You tap the phone once, boom, for number one. Yeah. Give it two or three seconds. Then tap if you wanted two. You go yes. boom, boom, tap the, tap the pips twice. Yes. And then tap the pips three times for three. So you get one, two, three. Right. So you could dial one, two, three, which was the speaking clock. Yeah, but you still got charged. Yeah, you you got charged, but the point is we could yeah, use the phone. Yeah, that was because well, you know when you <laughs> dialed a number, yeah, right. So if you hit, put your finger in a five, yeah, pulled it round and it would go five, right. At the exchange, there'd be the equipment was all mechanical. I mean, yeah. I I worked in a telephone exchange. The noise in there was amazing. So mm. when you dialed a five, it would go. Click, 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 like that. Yeah. No, that was six, wasn't it? It was a click, 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 click. This thing would literally move up a column five times. And right. then when you dialed another number two, it would turn round. Click, click, like that. Right. And then it would go to another piece of equipment, and that's how the seven numbers were made up, right? And... Obviously, during the night, you'd have just have one or two pieces of equipment doing this. During the daytime, it was deafening. Night, night, the, aunt. It, it was absolutely deafening in those <laughs> telephone exchanges. Yeah. Absolutely deafening in there with all this equipment going up and down. Now, that was... So, Dala 5, pushing that little button on the top there did exactly the same as that. It would... It would send five pulses down the line, the same as if you dialed a five. They actually did the same thing, believe it or not. Well, the, the thing was, is my mum and dad used to put the lock on number one, so you couldn't turn it past number one. <laughs> yeah, but you found a way around it. Well done. But, yeah, so that's how we use the pips. <laughs>
It was a good way, though. <laughs> you still made your telephone call. Well done, yeah, Dino. And we, we did, and we did that for years. And then in, in the end, what we ended up doing is um, that's when the push-button phones come in. Yeah. So what my mum and dad uh, used to do, my mum and dad would lock, because they had a phone upstairs and down. They'd right. take different, when they used to go out, because we used to belt the phone, because yeah. we used to bring our cousins in America, and of course it was really, oh, really costly that, then. Yeah, that would cost an arm and a leg. Yeah. Now, so, uh, what, so what they'd do when the push-button phones come in, of course they couldn't lock the phone. No. So what no. they ended up doing was taking the phone out downstairs yeah. and leaving the one in their bedroom, and they'd put a lock on their door and lock, locked their bedroom door. So between the four kids, all we did is we went out and we bought a phone between the four of us, and when I went out, we used to plug it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you sound like a lot of dodgy people to me. I'm glad you weren't my bloody kids. Would have cost yeah. me an arm and a leg, we had you lot. Because of course, you, you, the bills never, needless to say, the bills never went down, but it, it, was, no, it, I don't, it was fun. I don't suppose they did. But, no. um... Uh, when when we talk about the cost of a telephone call there, um, I have uh, many cousins in Australia and they we literally would only ring them once a year. What would happen on Boxing Day, all the cousins over here would go round to someone's house. It wasn't it was was never our house where I lived uh, because we were um, relatively poor in comparison to my other uncles and aunts okay so we would go around to my other uncles and aunts and on boxing day a call would be booked oh, none right. of this none of this style yourself a call would be booked to australia uh for three o'clock in the afternoon and at three o'clock we'd all be waiting around this telephone for this call to come through and it cost a lot of money to make that call. Whereas now, you know, I could probably just pick up the phone now and talk to my cousin in, in, in Sydney for, for, for half an hour for about 10 quid, right? Yeah. In those days, and I'm going back here, 21, 35, 45, maybe 35 to 40 years, it was 10 pounds then. And that was yeah. really expensive. Really expensive. So, yeah, I, I, you know, certainly when you say when you say you were ringing your friends in America and all, all that business, that would have cost your mum and dad an arm and a leg. Well, it did. But what happened was my mum and dad's friend was an operator. Oh, uh, uh, yes. And um, so what they um, what she used to do. Maybe you she, shouldn't tell me this. I know where that's going. Well, there you go. Well, well, we, Maybe we'll you put should. it like this. We, we never paid for calls. <laughs> Chris, come on. Oh, Lord above. Have you been to confession today, dear? Oh, you don't be even in that mumbo jumbo, do you? I go to confession every Sunday when I'm on my knees. <laughs> Lovely to talk to you, Dino. And you, you've got some people. Um, Andy's saying, Ant says he doesn't like it. No, of course he, he doesn't he... like it, because he's not yeah. getting any attention. Well, That's right. I mentioned it. No, this is how it is now. I this like is how it. the chat show is. I like is. it like this. Keep periscope it shows are periscope shows. YouTube shows are YouTube shows. I'd, I, I had a, an at-length conversation with a few people, um, especially Wendy, over the last couple of days about this. And um, you see, now we've just had a long conversation, haven't we? Oh, yeah. We've just been on the phone. I mean, how long have we been? Oh, here we go. Uh, eight, eight minutes and the rest of it. So about, about 20 minutes on the phone we've just been. That is right? Now, if those messages were coming through on the Periscope now, right, yeah. I would have interrupted you left, right and centre. Oh, so-and-so says this. Oh, so-and-so says that. Now, I, I'm fully aware, not everyone will like this way of doing it. Not everyone will like the other way of doing it. So... Take your choice. Pick and choose. It's not yeah, hard, is right. it? Right, so, so just tell your people, because they're chatting away, just tell them about that if they want to win. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll mention that again. All right, All right thanks, Dino. Keep Lovely call. Bye. Fantastic call. Thank you very much. There we are, Dino in London. Yes, indeed. Those of you watching on the Periscope, just to let you know, I cannot see your messages. I've turned that off. However, you can join in if you've either got Skype or a telephone or an email address, OK? If you have Skype, my Skype username is, all one word, Chris Reardon UK. All right? Chris Reardon UK is the Skype username. That's wrong. <laughs> ah, ah, that's the old one. Delete what I just said. Delete. 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 The Skype username is... United Kingdom Talk. 
Once again, the Skype username is United Kingdom Talk. Okay? Also, there is a phone number. It is a local London phone number. It is not a premium rate number. And that phone number is 020-8144-3477. 020-8144-3477. Okay? I'll give them all back to you again in a moment. It's also come up on the YouTube show. You can watch us on YouTube. Very easy. Go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Down, halfway down the page, you'll see live now. Click on there and it'll open up on your screen and you'll be able to see us on there. A, a better picture as well because that's all in the, the high definition as well. If you've got an email, you can join in by email. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk so, alright so although I can't see your Periscope messages you can still join in either by Skype username United Kingdom Talk phone number 020-8144-3477 and uh, email as well chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk and we've done this because we found it, it's, it's just impossible to do the show I was doing by using the Periscope messages as well. I cannot see your messages, although you can talk to each other and generally run me down as much as you want, my darlings, okay? Now, did I turn that um, charger thing on there? Yes, I did. Got a couple of emails here come from uh, Marge. Thank you very much, Marge, who uh, sends in uh, a, an email from uh, earlier on this evening. Uh, we did a, a little Periscope earlier on. And it says, Hi, just watch Periscope. And may I suggest something on your morning glories, which are doing good. It's a bit different idea on what they grow up. The bush out quite a bit. I use chicken wire or uh, an up fence with wire. They can't really get a good hold on those sticks. So thank you very much, Marge. That's much appreciated. Um... I, I must be honest, Marge, I thought they were like little flowers that um, were like, uh, shall we say, busy lizards or something like that. I thought they were small plants. I didn't know they were up and climbing things. And now they're in the pots. It's probably a little bit late for me to do that now. Um, they certainly make vines. Oh, there you are, Marge. They certainly make vines to little feeler things that they pull out and grab on and at the moment they've grabbed onto the sticks and have now of course gone so far up so I think it's going to be a little bit late for me to do anything about that um, I, 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 next time I'll, I'll, I'll let them go and see what happens this time but certainly next time what I'll do is put something up the wall maybe as you suggest a piece of chicken wire and they can climb up there right up the wall but they do look very very pretty they look very very pretty um you say they will climb your fence. Yes, that's if I can get near the fence. At the moment, there's a lot of other plants on that, which you may have noticed in the video, uh, against the fence. Or, or indeed, uh, against my wall out the front there. If I'd have put them there, I, they could have climbed up there. But I didn't know that they were climbers. I didn't read the... Um, uh, I, I didn't read the um, little instructions on there. Thank you, Marge. Um, and she sends a, a little picture of them there climbing in various places. Thank you very much, darling. OK. Um, let's have a look here. Wendy, how are we doing? Is this all right? I just wanted to uh, ask you if this was OK now, my darling. Thank you very much. Now, let's... Uh, let's just go to my little list of things to talk about. Women's football. Women's football. Now, boys, have you got anything to say about this? Because, of course, I have. Now and again, I, I get a little thing in my head and I thought, I've got to mention that. I've absolutely got to mention that. Women's football. Now, apparently, I'm, 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 I'm not a lover of football. Not at all. Not men's or women's. I mean, sometimes I look at the men playing the football just to be looking at them, really, to be honest. But I've no interest, especially Cristiano Ronaldo. Uh, it, but I have no real interest in the game. I think it's just a, a silly old thing, football, and why people get so hit up about it all and who's winning and who's team they support. And yeah, we are the Reds. We are the Reds. We are, we are, we are. the And all the rest of that old rubbish, dear. You know, I haven't got time for any of that. But the women's football on the telly. Am I right? I heard on the radio earlier today 
that the women's team had got further than any of the men's football since 1966. Is that right? Is that absolutely right? The women's team had apparently got through to some semi-final, which I think was against Germany. Not quite sure who won. Perhaps someone can tell me that. But <laughs> they, they are supposed to have got so far. And I had a little think about this. Which, I'm sorry, chaps. If you're a football supporter... How do you feel now, mate? And you know what I put that down to? I put it down to a few things. Number one, the women are there for the football. Now, I very much doubt that money isn't being thrown around left, right and centre like they do with the blokes' football. They're in it because they like football. I'm, I'm not saying the blokes don't like football, but there's a lot of money involved there. Most of these blokes who play football now, let's take, for example, the very, very popular David Beckham. OK, is it about football or is it about your hair? What sort of car you've got? What house you've got? How money you've got in the bank? Which wag that you're, sh you're going out with now? Is that what it's all about? Because that's how it seems to us. Certainly seems like that to me, a non-football supporter. Now, my nephew is a big, big Chelsea supporter. He loves Chelsea. And from the sounds of it, he's just about to embark on, I think, probably a very expensive hobby. Watching football. How much is a ticket to go and watch a football? 50, 60, 75 quid? Maybe you're a dad with a couple of sons. How much is that going to cost you just to go out for a couple of hours on a Saturday afternoon? And that's not including the hot dogs and the burgers, dear. How much do they charge for one of those at a football match? I don't know. You tell me. Email in your answers, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Anyone know? Oh, there is an email to read out. I nearly forgot about that. Let me get that up here. There it is. There's an email here. I must, must read that out. I, I forgot this yesterday. So we'll do that as we've got an extra little show tonight, OK? What do you think about the football? Call in 020 3477 Women's football. Ladies, do you watch women's football? Is that is that your sort of thing, maybe? I don't know. 020 3477 on the phone. United Kingdom talk on the Skype. Anyone got any comments at all about women's football? Because the blokes are too busy doing their hair. Oh, is my hair all right? Oh, do I need to pluck my eyebrows? I bet the ladies don't do that. The whole thing's turned around, isn't it? Chaps, do you remember? When you were going to pick your girlfriend, wife, someone else's wife up for a night out, you get round the house and you might be waiting there half hour while they're doing themselves, you know, pulling a few, plucking a few eyelashes and things like that. I bet they're waiting for you now, aren't they? What's happened to real men, dear? Real men, like me. What's happened to you? You've disappeared. You've been replaced by Metro Man. Perfect hair, designer clothes, even designer underpants. What's all that about? 25 quid for a pair of bloody underpants, dear? Are you off your heads? What happens with the ones from Marks and Spencers? Ten pairs for three quid. No one's wearing them now. Oh, no, they've got to say Calvin Klein round the top. Or Aussie bum on the bum. Have you got a pair of Aussie bum shorts? Why are people spending vast sums of money on underwear? No one bloody sees it, dear. But is it because all the all, all the footballers are? 
I mean, you can just see... They're not real men anyway, are they footballers? Any? They're not real men. Poncing around with their hair all the time and the latest aftershave, the latest Cristiano Ronaldo aftershave to buy or wear. It begs the question, I wonder what it's like in their change rooms after, after, after a game, in the men's changing rooms. You can just imagine they're all coming now, aren't they? All walking off the field, all butch, or trying to look butch, and failing miserably. The last butch footballer we had was Vinnie Jones, and he's not playing anymore. He was the last, uh, the, ve the very last um, uh, butch footballer. <laughs> Any comments about that? Call in 020-8144-3477 or you can have the um, uh, uh, Skype United Kingdom talk. Call in on a Skype, OK? I think it's hilarious. Do you think they go in the uh, dressing room? As, oh, we're not getting in that water. It's full of dirt. Do you not think so? Marge says, UK football to me is only soccer, not real football like in America. Oh, that's not real football, Marge. I mean, it's not. Dino says he's going to watch the women's football final in about an hour's time. It's been great. Uh, you, is it USA and Japan? Is it? I'm, I'm, I won't be watching it because I don't like football. I don't like football. Uh, Marge, the whole point of not having the messages on... Um, uh, Periscope is that I don't see them and you're wrong. you just made a comment on them is it oh dear what do you reckon on the uh, women's football eh very strange but they've done better than you chaps men's football do me a favour and have you noticed whenever the World Cup comes round they go on and on they just go on and on about 1966, don't they? On and on about 1966. I mean, how far back do you want? Do you want, do you want us to come out with you know every time the uh, the Germans say something, we can go on about the war? No, that doesn't happen, does it? Every time the French say something, do we go on and on about Napoleon? No, it doesn't. So why do they go on and on about a win in 1966? Most of the people are dead. What's the point in going on and on about it? The Eurovision Song Contest people don't do that, do they? Now, Jerry says men football is better than women's football. You're having a laugh. How do you work that out? They can't even win. They can't even get through. The women have got through. They got through to the semi-finals, dear. How far do we get? No, there's little Rain Rooney with his pretend hair on his head, prancing around the field, kicking a ball here, there and everywhere, having a little kiss now and again on the field with other people. Are they all gay, footballers? Are all footballers gay? Because they keep snogging each other's face off. I oh, don't they, dear? On the football pitch. I don't understand it. I really don't. <laughs> Email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. It's a Sunday night, just coming up to uh, 13 minutes past 11 here in the UK. This is United Kingdom Talk. Got an email here from Thomas. Now, Thomas has been uh, listening to the show. He listens, OK? Because you can just download the audio-only version of this. Thomas is in Poland. Hi, Chris. Oh, and he doesn't listen anymore. One minute. I've just, just read the top of the email. Hi, Chris. I used to listen to your show some years ago. And I think I resume to listen now and again when I have some more free time. I don't know why, but I thought about United Kingdom Talk when I listed again my favourite English audiobooks, Adrian Mole series. I was really surprised when I found out that you are still carrying on the show. How can you possibly manage to do so much talking without repeating yourself through all these years is beyond my imagination. Oh, I'm sure I do repeat myself, uh, Thomas. I'm sure I probably repeat myself a lot without actually realising it. I'm sure I've told, told the same stories again and again and again, Thomas. So don't worry. It doesn't worry me. Don't let it worry you either. 
<laughs> I'm now preparing for my third marathon. Well done. Marathon. Now, I used to do a bit of jogging. I did for about two and a half years, and then my knees started giving me problems, and the doctor said I must stop jogging, so I don't do that anymore. Um, but it is a wonderful way to keep fit, and I always felt really good after I'd been jogging. And I would go out in all sorts of weathers. You know, if it was sunny or raining, I went out when it was snow, uh, ice, everything. I, I never stopped me going out. Sometimes on a really cold day, a really good, really cold day. Now, oh, I really don't want to go out there. But, you know, you start running. Three minutes later, you've warmed up. I used to love it. I loved it. But, unfortunately, I had to stop. I'm now preparing. I never did a marathon, though. I, I, I built up to about running an hour non-stop. I'm now preparing for my third marathon. And i a little bit addicted to running. Ex yes, exactly. Actually, I think that's what done my knees in because I, I was going every day and running for an hour. And I don't th I think that's what did it in. In fact, it was you who inspired me for running, although you resigned due to feeble excuse of knee problems. <laughs> I just returned from my trip in South Korea. Last time I was in London, but I had so much Polish that I didn't feel like I was abroad there at all. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Oh, is that gone off? My air thing stopped. Oh, no, it's come on again. Oh, it's a thermostat, isn't it? This, this time, I wanted to go to some other place, and I learned Japanese for one year. I started thinking of going to Japan, but my daughter wanted to, wanted to go to Korea as she had listened to a lot of K-pop and took a Korean course. rest of my family refused to spend 11 hours in a plane, so I too switched Japanese to Korean, and this year, June, we both went there for 12 days. How wonderful. As we both... Did you go to South or North Korea? It doesn't say. As we both tried to be adventurous as well as budget, budgeted travellers, we only used local transportation in Korea and we travelled through the country a lot staying in the hostels. I'll write you some more information about our trip another time. I really love Korea and I feel like an expert now. Really nice place to visit or even to live in. Greetings from Poland and that's from Thomas. And that's Thomas with a Z. Um, yes, how fascinating to go to Korea. But it, it doesn't say whether you were going to North or South Korea, um, uh, Thomas. I'm, I'm assuming South, but it might have been North. Now, that would be interesting, I think, to go to North Korea and make your own mind up about what actually goes on there. I think, um, in many cases, you know, media, newspapers, television, everything like that, media gives us their opinion of something. And I think sometimes you need to go yourself. Would I go to North Korea? I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm a funny old traveller. Unless people can speak, it, it, it's it's rude, really, from my part. Unless you can speak English, or something like that, then I'm I'm a little bit funny there, really, you know. But to see Korea as it really is, North Korea, I think you need to go and make up your own mind. All right. OK, email address. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot UK is the email address. You can call in as well. 020 8144 3477. Or we've got the Skype in as well. Skype username United Kingdom Talk. Skype username is uh, United Kingdom Talk. Anyone see the John Bishop show last night on BBC One? Never seen it before. Didn't know who he was. Didn't know to what to expect. But it looks like it's a recorded at a large theatre. I'm, I think, the Hackney Empire, and it was, I was really good. And he was talking. Oh, he was talking about the app Tinder. Now, do you know what Tinder is? Okay, 
It is an app for your mobile phone, and it's a dating app. And he was saying, he came on the stage, and he was saying, if there's anyone under the age of 25 here, 20, remember, the, remember the number there, 25, there has always been smartphones and computers in your lives. What was that noise? Oh, it sounded suspiciously like a wasp or a bee. I hope not. Mind you, the lights are on. They'll attract them to the uh, to the little uh, studio lights that I've got on here, I think. And he was saying, do you know what we had to do when we were your age? When we were teenagers? Because what they do now, and this includes people in pubs and clubs, OK? The straight dating app is called Tinder. The gay dating app is called Grinder. I believe they're both by the same company. Perhaps, Dino, you can tell me if that's right or not. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're by the same company. By the way, if you're watching on Periscope, you can also join us on YouTube. YouTube username, youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. YouTube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK is where the uh, YouTube feed of this particular show is coming on, all right? And I can't see your Periscope messages, but you can join in either on Skype, Skype username United Kingdom Talk, or phone 020 3477, a local London number, or by email chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Got an email from Craig just come in there, which I'll be reading you in a moment or two. Anyway, so nowadays, young old Dino's just uh, come back with an answer there. Let's see. Yes, indeed. OK, so Tinder and Grinder, thank you very much, Dino, are actually run by the same people. So. When they want to meet someone. What do young people generally do now? They open up their Tinder or their Grinder and start flicking through the photographs. There are little profile things on there where you can do a little bio about yourself that sort of thing but generally it's the photo if you put a dodgy photo on there that is fatal you can be blocked before anything's happened at all forget personality forget it you can have the nicest personality in the world i can't turn it off now one minute there it goes. You can have the nicest personality in the world, but with a wrong photo, or maybe you're not the perfect oil painting, you've had it, mate. No chance at all. Absolutely no chance at all. And that's how they find it. That's how they find their partners, wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, one night stand. It's all on Tinder and Grinder. Flick or oh no. Flick, no, no, oh, that one's not bad. Flick, flick, and you can spend hours, hours going through people's photographs, trying to find your, in your mind, your, your perfect uh, uh, look, I suppose the word would be, look. Fortunately, not everyone finds person A perfect looking. The old saying, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, very much is still in swing here. But that's how they find people. Even when they are sitting in a club or a bar, they will pick up their phone and flick to see who's nearby. Oh, we've got a call coming in. Good morning, line seven. Hello. Hello. It's Dino again. It's Dino again. Are you feeling sorry for the fact that there's no one else calling in then? Um, yes. But <laughs> I'm going to tell you something very quick and then I'm going to get off so you can carry on what were you saying. Yes. I went out the other night yep. to a bar, a normal bar. Yeah. And everybody that was in the bar, there was about, I'd say, 200 people in this bar. Yes. And a bar is supposed to be where you go out and you socialise. Yeah, I know Every, what you're going to say. And I was walking around, as you do... And everybody was looking down at their phone, yep. and of course, you recognise Tinder and Grinder. Yeah. 
and everybody was on Tinder and Grinder, and then looking up because you can see how many feet people are away from you. Yeah. What's the point of going out if you're trying to find a date if you're in a bar? where you're supposed to have social contact and, you know, go out because that's what you want. And you're standing there looking at your phone, looking at who's where and, you know... Dino, what's, Dino, what... they don't want social contact. No, exactly. They don't want it. When they come up to me, young people, when they come up to me, they might want... Uh, they, they generally only come up to me to ask for a song, OK? And do you know what they do? They stand right in front of me. OK, inches away, about as far away as that little camera is to me now, right? Yeah. They then get their mobile phones and type in a note what record they want and then hold it to my face. No. They don't well. want to talk. They do not know how to talk to someone. Well, that is exactly what happens. You speak to any DJ and they will tell you the same thing. They have the audacity to stand there, type away right in front of you, type away on the phone and then hold it into your face, at which point I move their arm away and I say, talk to me. And they were, what? Talk to me. What do you want? It's weird, isn't it? And I, I, just, I get angry. You see, the thing is, my nephew... How old? Is, my nephew is 15 years of age. Right, so is that age, yeah? And I say to him, when we, when we, I'm, I sound, you, you know, you, they say you always turn into your parents, yes. so to speak. And I say to him, when I was your age, we didn't have a computer. We didn't have anything. All we had was board games. Yeah. You had to sit around with your family, around the table, and that was your interaction. Board games. Or you went outside outside, and you actually played maybe a game of football, knock down ginger. On your bike, on your bike. Skipping. Um, you, did, you did stuff, but you did it, and you interacted with other kids. Yes. All it is now... Uh, and can you tell Chris to button down his collar? <laughs> okay. No, just there you see. Carry on. Go um, on what you, um, just get on. Now, you've so, been become distracted then. I was. I'm See what happens. You became distracted. Turn, Ignore the marks. Go right, on, carry I, on. I turned it off. Um, so <laughs> you used to interact. You, yes. You'd go outside and you'd interact with other kids. Yes. Now, my yes. nephew spends hours and hours and hours in his bedroom with the door shut. When you open it, he's on his Xbox and in his ear he's got yep. that thing and he's talking to people the other side of the world who he's playing games against yep. the other and side of the world. And you go, who are you talking to? Oh, so-and-so, so-and-so. Well, who's he? Oh, we've been talking for about three years and we play an Xbox game together. But you don't see him from dusk till dawn. No. And he comes out for his dinner and he's back in there. No oh. interaction. That's I, the I don't I'm know making. where... No I, interaction. I don't know where we're going to be in 20 years' time with this, you see. Um, when these people, if they don't get out, then in 20 years' time, all we're going to have is people that used to sit or sit sit in their rooms on their uh, Nintendo Xbox things and all that business. Yeah. And they may, may or not, may not have gone to work. I just wonder where we're going to be at that. I mean, it's one of the reasons all the pubs are closing, I think. Do you know what? I totally agree with you. That is why the where pubs are we gonna be? and bars are closing. Do, do, do people actually, do, you know, you kind of wonder, do they actually ever want to leave the house? Do well, they do you, ever want to leave the house? Would, would you, I mean, I can remember when, you know, when the internet started to get really, really popular. Yeah. I mean, my dad years and years ago worked for the AA, and I remember when he bought his first, because the AA, they, you know, obviously they had to be in contact with everybody else, you know, to go out to people who were broken down. And I remember my dad bringing home a mobile phone. It was the size of a car battery. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. he brought it into the house to charge it up. Yeah. And he used to walk yeah. around with it. And I tell you, within a couple of months, he had muscles. About <laughs> three years later, the, the mobile phone, which was readily available to all of us, which was on the old one-to-one. -one, yes, yes, yes. It, it, it still was the size of a brick with a long plastic or aerial that used that used to come up out the top of it yeah. i got my first mobile phone in 1990 that was my right. first mobile phone and i didn't know anyone else <clears throat> who had a mobile phone nobody no no in 1990 and i first got on the internet and i was on aol in 1990 and i didn't know no one else on the internet and of course there was no google there was no yahoo there was no nothing you just had to be with the network that you were with. Yeah. And all you could find out on your computer was information. Mm. And that each 
it, it had a chat program, but only if you belonged to, for instance, AOL, which had its own chat, ComputerServe, which had its own chat. Each CompuServe, network had its CompuServe, own chat. Because that, that's the one I was on, CompuServe. Me too. I was on that before AOL, only for a couple of months. But the point being, you couldn't reach anyone else on any other network. No. And, I mean, now you've got text messaging. I remember when they first brought out text messaging. You know, first of all, mobile phones literally just had phone calls. And then when text messages came in, oh, my God. I mean, it was mental. Now they've gone a step further. Now you can see actually people's locations. What's going to be the next thing? Yeah. I, 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 somewhere along the road will be holograms, right? Our, you know, you, you and me will actually be able to be sitting next to each other, having a conversation as if you're in the same room with me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I remember watching 24. Do you remember that program with... Um, no, watching... never watched that. Oh, right. Is that the well, thing where everything stops for a few seconds or something like that? It's basically what happens within 24 hours. They, they break it down by hour by hour, right. each program. Right. Well, Kiefer Sutherland worked in this... Um, uh, I can't really explain it to you, but what I was going to say about it was is they had this big glass... What I can only describe to you as a glass window right. in the middle of a room. And basically, he would touch the glass window, and it, it came up like a computer screen. But it was a massive glass, a bit like a large, large screen TV. But it okay. was like it, it was like two hundred in a two hundred inch screen. Yes. And he'd touch it, and he could literally use it like a mobile phone. And whereas we've got Skype now, where you could see somebody yes. on this on this pane of glass, and it was just a pane of glass. He was having conversations with people. He could pull up maps, you know, right. pull it to the left, pull it to the right, drag, drop. All on this yeah, glass, and yeah. I think that's what's going to happen next. You'll have a pane of glass, there'll be a tiny little microchip in it, and it'll all be on this pane of glass right in front of you, and you'll be able to, everything in the whole wide world, you'll be able to look at, do, see, touch, smell. It was all coming through this mm. pane of glass. And I, think that's the, I think that's the future of uh, what we're probably going to see. Yeah. Some, some, something like that. But the point I'm making is, is that we never had all of this. No, we didn't. And, and kids today, they go, what? What, 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 are you, what are you talking about? And it's the same with things like trainers. When they see a 150-pound pair of trainers, you see them sometimes when you go into a shop. Mum, I want these. Get them. Get That's my these nephew. for me That's now. That's my nephew. No, but my nephew, yeah. died. he tends to save up for stuff himself now. But he did go to, um, it was a couple of years ago, to the, uh, is it a uh, 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 Nike, big Nike store in London? Yeah, is it Nike, Nike, store. Nike yeah. or whatever it is? Anyway, so he went there. He'd come all the way from Lincolnshire. Right to go into this Nike shop and have, I th I think he could put his own design on the side or something like That's that right, on the back. Right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you you gave them the order sheet. That's right. And then they say, okay, come back in a week and it'll be done. Uh, did he come back or did they send them? I can't they remember now. They, I think they might have sent them actually. Yeah. And then through the post, a week later, would come this pair of trainers with the design that he's chosen uh, on the side of it. Thank you very much. One hundred and thirty pounds. That's right. My Jesus. cousin got a pair and did, did the same thing. I was like, what? For a pair of shoes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One hundred and thirty quid. But you see, kids have got the kids think nothing of value money no. anymore. No, well, I think he does now. He works now. Um, he left, I don't know if you heard the show. It's a, probably a couple of months ago now. And he actually called in. It was the first time my nephew had called in. He's 18 now. Yeah. And he works in a car. Um, Dealership? No. Uh, he repairs scratches and dents. Oh, right. What's, yeah, what's yeah. that called? Bodywork. Is that body work? Yes, yeah, yeah, body yeah. work. Isn't it? So he does that, and it's a, it's a it's an independent garage. So you take your Toyota, your Rolls Royce, doesn't matter. Go in there, he will he will fix it for you. Okay. And we were talking about, you know, the youth unemployment, and he's up north. He's up north in a little village called Woodall Spa in Lincolnshire. And I said, what do you say to these young people who come? in newspapers and on the television and say, we haven't got any jobs. And you know what he said? Look harder. I said, so how did you get your job? He said, I walked into a couple of places and asked if I could have a job. He said, they need to look harder. That's what he said. Someone their own age, in the same situation, 
up north in the same place where jobs are so uh, scarce? That's what he said. They need to look harder. But half of them don't look harder because they can't get out of their bloody beds in the morning. And you see them on here later on. On Periscope. They're all on here. Two o'clock in the afternoon. I've just got up. Shocking. And they won't be in bed until four in the morning. It's quite crazy, really. Mm. I mean, luckily, they've got satellite television now. We didn't have that. Oh, God. See, this is, this is the thing. It's, it, it's progression. Uh, it's cha- it, progression has seriously changed people's lives. I mean, in front of me right now, I'll tell you what I've got. I've got a, I've got a digital telephone. I've got a computer. To the left of the computer, I have got an iPad, an iPhone sitting in front of me. I've got a handheld phone to the very left of that on the desk. And if I turn around the other side of the room, I've got an iMac. So, I mean, it's technology. Look how it's, it, it's moved on. Oh, and I've got a 50-inch television screen behind me as well and, uh, and a digibox. That's all, in, that's all in one room. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just in one room. So the, the, the point being is, is that 20 years ago, you would have had a, if you were lucky, you might have had a, uh, a phone, a walkabout phone. Yes. But, and, and, a, and a TV where you'd physically have to go up and push the button. Could you, could you, kids, don't, you, kids don't even have to get out of their bed to do any of that now. Could, no, it's, it's, all in, it's all on the screen in front of them. They're just sitting sit in the bed. Could, yeah. you, could you go on a holiday... And leave it all behind, all of it. I tell you what, all of I, it. I, well, you say that. I have got two of my best friends who are telephone and not telephone. I'll rephrase that. They are mobile phone addicts. I go out with them, and I've been out with them a couple of times over the past week. And we'll go out to dinner. We we'll go to a pub, a bar, or even in the phone at the traffic lights when they're driving. They are on their phone because they think they're missing something yeah. and they cannot get off the phone. And I said to them two days ago, do you know what? I'm getting really peeved with the two of you. I am not coming out with you unless you turn your phones off because we go out somewhere and it's as if I'm not, I'm not there. We're not there together. It's like we're all in three different dimensions in different places because yeah. we're not interacting. Yeah. You are on your phone. Yeah. You, are, you are texting people, chatting to people, looking, thinking what something that's going on. Like you're looking on Facebook, you're looking on this site, that site. And, you know, one's on Tinder, one's on another site. They're all looking for something different. What's the point of going out together if there's no interaction? One's on one phone, one's on another, and one's on another, and there's, and there's me. I, c- I can live without the phone. Um, I like to have it on with me and I don't, I can't go anywhere without carrying it with me because mum and dad aren't too well. So I always have got my phone on me. I can take it or leave it, checking messages. If I get messages, I'll look at it. If not, if I'm out with people, I was brought up in a way that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be rude. Um, I would never, I would never, I would never sit there on a phone in front of people, um, eat dinner, and be chatting away, and then all of a sudden I look down and I'm but, on my but phone. You That's said, the height of rudeness. You said then about rude. They don't see it as rude. No. That's the thing. But it's completely addicted. normal for them to be at a table full of a load of people and then just pick up the phone and quickly do something to yeah, it. Yeah, but Chris, it's not quickly. They'll, they'll, once they're on yeah. it... That's it. They yeah, yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. on it. That's it. Out of the conversation, mate. Go on. Yeah, that's it to the end of the night. Another unless planet. Unless you say something. Another planet. It is total, total addictions. I wonder who else that is going to email you or message you that's going to say that they are actually addicted to their yeah. phone. And I bet you there'd be very few people that admit it, but most people today, I think, are addicted to their phones. Yes. Because their life is in their phones. My, I don't keep my life in my phone. It's like now, you can now get your Oyster card loaded up to a chip with inside of your phone. You can now touch your phone and pay by PayPal by touching your phone on, on readers. Everything you can now put within your phone. I would never put all of my BND all inside my phone. Never. I, I keep things separate. It's like my gas, I pay the gas bill. Electric, I pay with, to the electric company. The gas, I pay to the gas bill. Some people keep it all, all together. Never put all your eggs in one basket because if you lose it, you lost a lot. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I think a lot of people make that mistake. When you hear people say, oh, I've lost my phone. My life's in there. So, well, how can you be so stupid? Well, I'd, that happened to me last year. But did you have everything in the phone? 
no, no, I, I could still carry on. But um, my sat nav is on the phone. Yeah. And my phone numbers are on the phone. And I didn't actually lose it because these, these iPhones, they back themselves up at night, don't yeah. they? They well, do yeah, it every you, night. If, you, if but, you plug it back into your phone, it yes, back into your iTunes, cost, you can back it all up. Cost cost me 750 quid um, the very same day, two hours later, because I knew I wasn't going to get it back. I yeah. knew I wasn't going to get it back. I've dropped it. Someone's picked it up. And would you call that stolen? I don't know if you'd call that stolen. Do you know hey, what I do, Chris? What? I know you're going to think this this sounds mad and what's the point of having a phone, but every time I get some new phone numbers, once a month, I go through my phone because I've still got my old trusted phone book that I used to write phone numbers in before we had mobile phones. And the way I back mine up, even though I've got my computer, because you never know when that's going to blow up, I still physically <laughs> yeah, write... Yeah, true enough. I do. I still physically write phone numbers inside a phone book, which is in my jaw. Right. Because you never know. You never right. know. But like I said, it's all technology. One day, if technology, <clears throat> God forbid there is ever a serious attack on either the world or the UK or a sat satellites that are up in the yeah. sky and yeah. everything goes out, where will people, what, what will people do? They'll have what to go back do? to bloody Won't know what using, to do. Using, using proper calculators and abacuses and actually physically write, writing, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? And physically writing things down. Abacuses. I mean, when's the last time you sent a letter? Oh, years ago. Oh, there you go. Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> Excuse Bless me. You. Oh, dear. The dust is rising in here. Well, actually, yeah. when I say dust is rising, I look at the shelves in here. They, have got everything's a got a thin layer of dust in here. Have you got ah. a Dyson? Eh? Have you got a Dyson? <laughs> no, I haven't got a Dyson. I've Yay! got a... They're got too a Dyson, expensive, dear. Do you still they're use like a dustpan and brush? Eh? Do you still use a dustpan and brush? No, I've got a Hoover. Oh, you've got a Hoover. Hoover. But the, the point I'm making is because it's all moved on so rapidly and everything's yeah. moved on so quickly. Are you about to sneeze again? No, are, not at all. No. Carry on. Um, but because it's all moved on so quickly, is that, um, like I said, you don't write a letter. I can't remember the last time I wrote a letter, yeah. went into the post office and asked for some stamps. And, um, you know, everything's via email. It's, all, it's so instant. Yeah. I mean, like I say, with buying this house, my solicitor said to me, oh, I'll send you an email. I said, no, I want hard copies. I want stuff to show that you've written to me and I want a signature on it. Oh, we don't do that anymore. Well, you do it because I want it. Well, you, you say that about housing. I was listening to a, a very interesting thing on on, the, on Mondays on LBC at 9 o'clock on the Clive Ball Show. They yeah. have a money bloke comes on. And uh, it was a mortgage bloke last week, and you can ring him with your questions and that. And this bloke says, um, oh, you know, I've got a bit of a problem with my deeds. What I, I've paid my mortgage off, but the, the building society still hasn't sent me my deeds yet. Um, and it was like six months ago. What should I do? Right? Do you know what the answer to this was? Go and have a guess. <coughs> it's on a microchip. Yes. Exactly. He said, the deeds don't really count for anything anymore other than if you want to put them in a frame and put them on the wall. Absolutely. He said it's all held electronically, which in ways is good, you know, because God knows over the years how many people have lost their deeds and Christ knows how much it must cost them to replace those. Uh, but it's now all electronic. And you see what you're saying there? If someone attacked our country electronically not with a bomb or any sort of nuclear someone maybe some electrical pulse which knocked out everything and wiped the memory of everything then what the hell would we do well i, I mean i i can remember i was 15 years of age when i was about five my grandparents opened an account for me at the halifax building society as it was well, that then. was my first one yeah and i had a paying in book Wait, was, was it at wandsworth no, mine was at Streatham. Okay. Right. So what happened was, every time you went in, they stamped it. Yes. So if you had £100 in there and you took £10, they could, they could see you had £90 yep. left in there. Someone would write it down. They'd exactly. have 100 and then minus 10 in the withdrawals, and then it'd say 90 and they put a little stamp on. Yes. That's right. So the point being is, if we, got, if we did get attacked by something out of the sky and you tried to go to your cash point, you couldn't get any money out. If you went into the bank, because it's all electronic, they wouldn't know how much money you had, so how would they find out if you wanted to withdraw money how much you got you wouldn't be able to no and they make mistakes it's, it's the point i'm making again is the technology it, it, i mean don't get me wrong i love it 
I do. You must bear in mind, I wouldn't be I do, able I love to it. sit here. But it's dangerous. I wouldn't there's, be there's able. There's nowhere where it's, it's physically back, backed up in, in writing anywhere. Yeah, anything. yeah. But with the technology, you must remember, I wouldn't be able to sit here and do this without the technology yeah. that we've got now. I showed my dad, who is 75 years of age today, Periscope, and I played him your, one or two of your shows, and he would sit there. He sat there today with my mum because they came round for lunch and they were absolutely flabbergasted that something like Periscope existed. Yeah. And I was showing them people walking down the road in the West End and they went, oh my God, yeah. they've never seen anything like it because I've got my mum and dad now tech savvy because they speak to my aunt in America on FaceTime, Skype and all uh, of that because yeah, it, yeah. it's all free. And of course yeah. they love it. And this yeah. is my mum my and dad who are in their, like, in their late 70s. They're loving it. But have they got they, smartphones? Oh yeah. But they, they would, my mum and dad absolutely love it. It's like, it's opened their eyes to a whole new world that they never had when they were young. And they're like, my mum and dad now are like kids in a sweet shop. Oh, I can believe it. Um, they're loving it. One of my friends, Ray Reynolds, he was a, a DJ as well. He comes along to the karaoke nights that I do. He comes along to all of them. Oh, actually. he's very funny. He's the guy who plays the banjo. I think you've probably seen, seen him. him in some of them. Absolutely hysterical. He's a character. wonderful, 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 warm-hearted man. You couldn't, 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 you'd have hard trouble finding anyone with such a warm heart as he has got. And he brings me in little things, little mm. things which probably wouldn't mean much to people. Generally, recordings. Look what he's lent me today. I've got it here. He's lent me a selection of CDs, one of which is original jingles from Radio London, the oh, Big wow. L ship. Now, this, of course, was, I think this was before our time, Dino. Radio London and Radio Caroline. Yes. Um, wow. Yes. Well, no, I, w I would have been one year old, 1964 to 67. OK, so that was before me. And also, he's lent me this book. One moment. Which I've got here behind me. Tony Blackburn, Poptastic. Now, I'm not a reader, OK? Yeah. What tends to happen with me is that I open a book and then I've, I've read 20 pages and then I don't see the rest of the story. You understand what I mean? Yeah. All I see is the next 900 pages. Yeah. And I think, see, I'm oh, the same. I, I don't read. I can't be bothered with that and I put it to one side. You see, I'm one of these people who would, would read the first little bit of the book and then I go straight to the back to see what the ending is. Oh, right, OK. I mean, my mum used to read all the time. She'd have three or four books going at the same time. I have and to you tell think, you... How in, do you do that? I have to tell you that in my life, I, books to buy, yes. I've probably only had about three books in Gosh, my life. One three? Of them I bought, one, one of them I bought last year. Yeah, yeah. I don't read. And again, because the internet is so accessible, you read everything online. Yes, yes, yeah. So you don't, you don't buy. And then, of course, you've got people that have got these Kindles and they download all these books. You see them on the train you know, and, and, and they're engrossed in their Kindles, you know, sort of uh, reading sort of one after the other, page after page. And I think, well, you know, that's cool. And sometimes you hear people listening to podcasts. Yeah. Like, you know, Steve Allen on LBC in the mornings, he does his, yeah, his, yeah. his podcast. So you... and. You know, you can down, download podcasts of all shows that you've, that you've missed and you hear, you know, people listening to podcasts on the train as well. Is there anything that you listen to podcast-wise? Do you know what? I've never listened to a podcast oh, in right, my okay. life. I mean, I, there's, there's a science guy I quite like. He's called Dr. Carl. He's in mm. Australia and he yeah. does a show. He does two shows. He does one over here on Radio 5 Live. I think it's like three o'clock in the morning on a... Wednesday, I think it is, on Radio 5 Live, just after the free clock news. And he also does a show on uh, Triple J in New York. This yeah. is Triple J, Australia's National Youth Network, and he's on there as well. You and see, my, my, it, that's, you all, that's all science and technology questions. People call in, and um, he's fantastic. He's an, he's an older bloke, and he can yeah. answer everything. My, my problem is, is the reason I don't like things like podcasts, I actually like to see what I'm hearing. Right. So I, I like, like I'm, even though I'm talking to you now on the phone, I'm watching you on my screen as well, even though there's a few seconds delay. Yes. <clears throat> I like to see what I'm, what I'm hearing. Um, the only time that I don't, I've been listening to LBC since 1973, since it started. Yeah, me too. And I've, I've near enough listened to it every night throughout my years. Right. And I turn on LBC. I never turn it on before one o'clock in the morning. I always listen to the overnight shows. And I've been listening to that... For, well, since I was since I was a baby. Do you like the new bloke, um, Darren? 
Um, I think it's like everything else. You it, you have to acquire a t- it's, it's taste acquired, but you yes. get used to them, and you, you you quickly forget the ones who were there before. Yes, yes. Um, I think it's just readjusting yourself. Okay. I mean. Uh, when you used to think through the night, when you used to have the old Clive Ball and you used to have a lot of the old presenters, I mean, a lot of people won't know what we're talking about. Steve, I know. Used, Steve used to do overnight. It was very good. It, it was. But I, I, I think, I mean, it's like if you was to disappear yourself, go on holiday for two weeks and you were to put someone else in your place for two weeks and they called themselves United Kingdom Talk, you said, all right, I'm going to get someone to stand in for me for two weeks. People would be going, oh, my God, isn't this boring? What a load of crap. And you'd probably get no viewers. But eventually they'd get used to it. Yes, they Yes, yes, um, right. And I, I, I think it's all about, um, because everything now, is, is, it's, it's about accessibility and people want live interaction, virtual reality, and, and unfortunately, since the things like Big Brother has started, virtual reality seems to have taken over yeah. our lives and our world. Well, not and mine. I don't well, think I, I could say it's I, overtaken I, mine. I, I, well, it's, it's not so much mine, but... Um, I think generally um, that it's taken over, I think, most people's. Mm. And the reason being is is because you're being forced into it. Yeah. Because you can't get a painting book now. You can't write, a, well, you can write a check, but no one, yes. who, who accepts a check now? They're forcing you into having check cards. Yeah. They're forcing you if you want a credit check you've got to go to like experience you've got to go to companies it's it's all compu- everything's computer generated yeah you, the point i'm making is you can't physically do anything manually anymore. no 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 you can't when's the last time where's your nearest phone box oh my word when's the last time you saw a phone box or where is it Few and far do you between, know, I, I don't know i don't they know used to be my... on every corner yeah they did they try, used to get. They also used to be smashed now, up as well. <laughs> yeah, try and find a phone box. Yeah, I'll do that. I, you know, I don't know. Oh yes, there's one. There's one near the um, near the news agent, but it's it's not close. I'd have to walk ten minutes to get to it. And yet there used to be one on every yeah, they single did. They street did. because they're taking it all the way. And do you know how much it is to make a phone call from a, from a payphone now? No, no idea. Fifty p. Cool. That's why everyone's got mobiles now. Well, that, that, that's exactly it. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind if, if they said, right, for one week in the whole of the UK or the whole of the world, yes. we're going to we're going to turn off everything to do with anything gadgets, yeah. and you will physically have to for one week or even one day, you will have to do things manually. Do you know what? I think there'd be turmoil. I think you're right. Absolute turmoil. People wouldn't know what to do. And they that's what I say to you. Could, could you go on holiday and leave everything behind and have a simple holiday? OK, I'll tell you what, I'll give you a TV set. That's all. My best friend has got his... Uh, he's got all um, cameras installed in his house. And what he does, when he goes on holiday, he checks in to see that everything is still in place on the cameras inside his house via, via his mobile phone. He cannot live. That's one of those ones I was telling you about, one of my friends. Gosh. He physically has to be doing everything. He checks his house. He checks every room by the cameras, blah, blah, blah. So he couldn't survive without it. But I would just like to see, just for one day, us going back to doing things manually and see how we all, how we mm. got on. Because mm. I don't think it's possible. No. I don't. No. That's my rant over for the evening, Chris. Well, thank you, Dina, for calling in a second time because no one else can be bothered. <laughs> well, I'm sure that as soon as I hang up, Someone is going to win. No, 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 they can't be bothered tonight. It doesn't matter though, because I can chat for at least five more hours. Oh, I could un- too. Unaided, unaided. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Between the two of us, we could put the world to life. <laughs> See you, Dino. Thanks, darling. Bye, ladies. Bye. Hey, uh, Dino in London. They're calling in a second time for us tonight. Uh, Marge says I have an Android on my phone, which I can locate. Uh, my phone any place lock it down and anything if it's lost even tells me where it is does ios have that software yes it does it's called find my phone which i've got on this phone although it didn't work when i lost when i lost the other phone um that was back in june i think it was last year june i lost a phone and i i i did the find my phone but it couldn't find it it's quite possible that perhaps someone picked it up and took the SIM card out. I think maybe that would stop it from working. Perhaps anyone technical would know that or not. I don't know. 
Okay. Uh, don't forget, you can join in, boys and girls. Uh, username, we are on Skype. The Skype username is, all one word, United Kingdom Talk. If you want to Skype in, it's United Kingdom Talk. There's a phone number as well. The London phone number is 020-8144-3477. A local London number, 020-8144-3477. Uh, Email as well. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Chris at United Kingdom Talk dot co dot uk. Now, um, I'm just going to read an email out from Craig in a second. But um, as I was saying a little while ago about that John Bishop show um, on BBC One last night, and it says, young people, do you realise what we had to do? What we had to do was physically... Go up to someone and ask them, do they want a drink? Or try try and build up the courage. I'm sorry, I'm, bent, I'm leaning down here because my sock's fallen down. I hate, Don't you hate that? I've got these stupid little socks on that only go as far as just below your ankles and they just fall down all the time. It's most annoying. You had to go up to someone and actually physically talk to them and then a lot of the time... Just be embarrassed. They don't have to do that now. Quick message. Hi. It's all they have to do. Pick up a phone, find the photo they like, click on it and say, hi. You don't know what we had to go through. And that was all on the John Bishop show last night. So very good. Uh, have a little look at that, boys and girls. Uh, I think it's on Saturday nights about nine o'clock, I think. Just after the wonderful casualty. Wasn't that exciting last night? Oh, yes. Charlie was about to inject drugs into himself because his son was doing it. Charlie is a nurse. He is the father of a son who's on drugs called Louis. And and um, he's been trying to get him off the drugs and he's not succeeding. And then he found his son hiding somewhere, just about to inject himself. And he said, OK, then. And he's telling her, go away. I don't want you. OK, then. And his dad then rolled up his sleeve, picked up another needle and said, I'm going to do it with you. If you can't beat him, join him. And he said, what? He said, if you can't beat him, join you. I'm going to do this. And he said, no, don't do that. He said, what, you think I'm not going to do it? You think I'm not going to do it? I'll tell you what, why don't you do it for me? And handed his son the syringe. It was a really good episode. Very good episode. You must watch Casualty on BBC One. I think I'm the only person in the country that watched Casualty. God's sake. Email address, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Here's an email from Craig. Hello, Craig. And he writes, hi, Chris. Craig here. We had thunderstorms on Friday late evening at 1.30 in the morning. Lasted until about two o'clock. Well, you just have half an hour of thunderstorms, did you? Oh, we had a lot on, a lot in London on the Friday night, I must say. Someone had a barbecue at the back of us playing music until 1am. People weren't home and the couple had to clear away the bottles. They'd just done it and the heavens opened up. Very lucky indeed. Hope you're well, Chris. I didn't really like the hot weather. I itch breathing trouble with my asthma. Oh, no, you know, I, I've, my asthma has practically disappeared over the last six to nine months. I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. He says, but I feel a lot better now. Castle Mead Radio News. He works on a hospital radio station called Castle Mead Radio. He said, recently I met the lovely man, the voice of Parker. You know, yes, m'lady. In Thunderbirds, the voice of Parker, David Graham. He was doing a convention at Leicester. He was delighted to visit me at Castle Mead Radio. We've been emailing now for a while. I couldn't believe he's 90 years old and very fit for 90 and still got the Parker voice. Yes, my lady. He did out with the original Dalek voice in the 1960s. He voiced uh, Grandpa Pig, Peppa Pig. I never saw, I've never seen Peppa Pig. He's done other voices in Fireball XL5 and other Jerry Anderson productions. Here's the part one, and he sends me a couple of links uh, from some bits and pieces uh, of, of his interview with him. So thank you very much, sir. We're going to have Sam Bailey uh, from X Factor as well popping into the radio station, playing some of her music and uh, uh, favourite stuff. Her husband, Craig, will be coming in as well. I got in touch with Craig via Twitter. He's following me. Um... Also, I'm hoping to get Doctor Who actress onto my show, Madame Vastra. 
Oh, that's the lizard lady. Yes, I remember her. Plans for our 25th birthday at Castle Mead Radio are running smoothly to celebrate our UK charity hospital radio station 25 years old this year. Our birthday party is on the 28th of November. Um, take care. And that's from Craig in Hinkley. Thank you very much, Craig. Nice to hear from you, sir. Really is nice to hear from you. Um, back onto the subject of the phones there. Marge says, it's not find my phone. This actually controls your phone when you have done... When you don't have it with you. It not only finds your phone, but gives you a full control to lock it or take a photo of anyone who actually tries to use the thing. It's called Android. Oh, AirDroid. I beg your pardon. It's software you install on your phone. Uh, similar to the iPhone thing, Marge. Uh, the iPhone one uh, should allow me to see where the phone is and will also allow me to lock it or send the person a message on it from my computer, or even completely wipe the memory. That's what I can do with the iPhone app. Um, uh, find your friends, my darling. OK. Anyone else want to call in, either on the Skype or the phone or the email? Nice and quickly now, because we're going to wrap things up very shortly this evening, boys and girls. Um, the phone number is 020 8144 3477. 020 8144 3477. Skype in on the username United Kingdom Talk. Our Skype in is United Kingdom Talk. And also, you can email the show as well, Chris at United Kingdom Talk. Dot co dot uk chris at uh, united kingdom talk dot co dot uk if you've only just joined us recently in the last few minutes or so you will be able to watch the whole of the show later on i'll be posting a link up and it will happen actually it won't probably won't happen on until tomorrow morning okay right about nine o'clock in the morning you'll be able to find it uh, either by going onto my facebook username chris weird in uk OK, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK or twitter.com Chris Reardon UK as well. Twitter.com Chris Reardon UK or simply uh, go to youtube.com Chris Reardon UK. That's generally always what the uh, username is. OK. Uh, Marge, will you chat with us after you stop streaming via Periscope? I mean, YouTube. Uh, no, because I then want a cup of tea and I'll, I've got to put the whole show together to upload back to YouTube afterwards. So, no, maybe a little bit later on. just depends how long um, uh, I'll be, OK? One of the other things they said on the John Bishop show, and you'll remember this, boys and girls. You know when you went to discos as a child? Not as a child, as a young person. Have you been to a disco later, ladies and gentlemen? Those of you over the age of 40. Been to one lately? Maybe not. No. Sure. There are no slurries. As John Bishop says, there are no slurries. You remember dancing the whole night long? And then at the end of the evening, near the end of the evening, you'd hear three or four slurries, wouldn't you? Now is that time. Now is that time, boys. Now is that time to go over to that young lady you've been trying to eye her up all night long and now you've been plucking up courage. You've probably had a little bit too much to drink now and now you've got the courage, haven't you? Now you've got the courage to go over and say, would you like to dance with me? They don't do them. There's no slurries. The end of the night is nothing like you remember over 40s. It's bang, 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 dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bang, bang. Da, 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 da. And then suddenly, the lights come on. And it's finished. This was all on the John Bishop show last night. All oh, right, the lights are on. We'll go home now. And that's it. You go. There are no slurries. What happened to those wonderful songs? Hello. Is it me you're looking for? Cause I wonder where you are. Where are the Osmonds? And they called it Puppy Love. Where is Dion Warwick? Why do they have to be a heartbreaker? None. Nothing. Zilch. Zero. Nothing. No slurries. How did that happen? What bloody DJ 
years ago decided that there weren't going to be any more slurries. And why? It was possibly some people's only chance of ever being able to go over and talk to a lady. Maybe for some reason, like me, you just couldn't go over and strike up a conversation pulled from the thin air. I couldn't do it. I was never able to do that. I could stand on a stage and talk to a thousand people. But I couldn't come off that stage and and try and chat someone up. Couldn't do it. But there were some people who could when the slow records. You then had an excuse to go and talk to someone. Would you like to dance with us? Oh, um, yeah, OK then. Like in that film Grease. You know when you see the girls sitting along the side there? They're waiting to be asked to dance. They don't do that anymore. No slurries. What happened to slurries, eh? Finally on the show today, on this special extra programme, finally today, the Grease vote. Now, I can probably bring up the result here. Let's have a look. OK, so on the on, on there we go on on the first on the BBC website, it says Greece debt crisis, Greece voters reject bailout offer. Anyone know what that means? Now, I understood weeks ago that they were going to have a vote to decide whether they want to stay in the EU or out of the EU. But in the last couple of days, I've been watching this with interest. And I don't actually understand the vote. Even on the BBC website here, Greece step crisis, there's the headline, Greece's Greek voters reject bailout offer. Does that mean they want to stay in Europe? or Because I don't know. What does it mean? And this is how it's been all along. The, the, the actual question I found very confusing. Why doesn't it say, do you want to stay in the EU or out of the EU? End of. No, they've made it bloody complicated. Which idiot has done that? It goes on. With almost all the ballots counted, results from the Greek, re Greek referendum show voters decisively rejecting the terms of an international bailout. OK, right, let me carry on. Figures published by the Interior Ministry showed 61% of those whose ballots had been counted no against 39 voting yes. So what does that mean? No, they don't want to stay in Europe. Or no, they do want to stay in Europe. Anyone? Any ideas? Greece's governing party had a campaign for a no, saying the bailout terms were humiliating. Well, looks like they voted no. Their opponents warned that this could see Greece ed ejected, ejected from the Eurozone. So... <laughs> I just don't get it. I do not get that at all. Thank you very much. Jerry says, great show as always. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> Dino says, they want to renegotiate their debt. Europe are saying we won't let them renegotiate. I can't work it out. What the hell's gone on with Greece? As I say, I thought it was going to be, yes, we're staying or no, we're come out. But it, I don't think it's not as simple as that at all, is it? Not as simple as that at all. Anyway, boys and girls, thank you very much. Um, I'm quite happy with, uh, with with how today has gone. It works uh, during the Periscope. Uh, um, I'm just going to open up your Periscope messages now. OK, I can now see your messages. If you want to type anything now. I will be able to see it, OK? But for, I think that works much better um, for the long 
hour long show to do it as it used to be rather than include the periscope messages and if you really want to you could have called in you decided not to that's great no problem at all with that i can just keep talking until the end of the world um there we are there's marge immediately sending a message there so i can see you now okay and uh, we'll, we'll do that in future. Now, just to let you know, boys and girls, uh, there's no live show next Saturday, OK? I won't be here next Saturday. But we'll have uh, Periscopes all week as usual. And if you're not on Periscope, it's an app which you can download for iPhone or um, Android. The app is called Periscope, and you need to add me as a user. My username is, all one word, Chris Reardon UK, all right? Chris Rin, UK. That's it. Uh, all right, Joey. I'm glad you enjoyed it, my darling. And uh, have a lovely week. I shall see you sometime, probably tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. And sleep tight. I hope the bed bugs don't bite. And if they do, if they do, Ash, there's no more time, darling. Half an hour. We've just had two. Just a minute. You've had nearly two hours. What are you talking about? Half an hour. We've had two hours. It's too early. I want a cup of tea. I might have some of my, mmm, carte d'or caramel ice cream. Mmm, bet you wish you had some of that, Marge. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll see you later, right? Cheerio now.